I myself, Professor Bontu Shah, I am coming from the University of Bardwan, West Bengal. I will talk on the paper, namely functional analysis. The paper is divided into 10 chapters, chapter 1, 2, chapter 10 and each chapter consists of some modules. Today, I will start on chapter 1, it consists of 3 modules. Basically, the chapter starts with matrix spaces. Actually, matrix spaces plays a vital role in functional analysis. All the classical analysis, namely in real analysis, are in the particular cases of study in matrix spaces. So, matrix spaces are the generalizations of real analysis, which are taught in undergraduate classes. This chapter is divided into three modules. Module 1 is concerned with some fundamentals inequalities which are very, very essential in functional analysis. Module 2 is basically devoted on the study of matrix spaces and some properties of completeness of a matrix space. So, one important theorem, namely the Bayer's category theorem has been presented in module 3 of this chapter 1 is devoted on separability of matrix spaces. The study of separability in matrix spaces is very, very simpler than other non-separable spaces. In this module, we shall also deal with some properties on separable matrix spaces and its subspaces. Now, I will talk on module 1 of this chapter 1, which consists of some fundamental inequalities, which are very essential for functional analysis. I will talk on chapter 1. The title of the chapter 1 is matrix spaces. Now, chapter 1 is started with module 1. This consists of fundamental inequalities. Now, we start with some basic definitions. Suppose, we consider a set consisting of all sequences of real or complex numbers x is equal to xi i such that sigma i equal to 1 to infinity mod of xi i to the power p is less than plus infinity where p is greater or equals to 1. The set is denoted by small lp and called the space of all bounded sequences of reals or complex scalars. Next definition, the class capital LP closed interval 0, 1 is the collection of all real valued measurable functions x t defined on closed interval 0, 1 such that integration 0 to 1 mod x t whole to the power p dt is strictly less than plus infinity, where p is greater or equals to 1. The first theorem is the following. If small a and b are real or complex numbers and p greater or equals to 1, then mod of a plus b whole to the power p is less or equals to 2 to the power p, mod of a to the power p plus mod of b to the power p. Proof, case 1. If mod a is greater than mod b, then mod of a plus b is less or equals to mod a plus mod b is strictly less than 2 of mod a. And so, mod of a plus b whole to the power p is less than 2 to the power p into mod of a to the power p less or equal to 2 to the power p mod of a to the power p plus mod of b to the power p. Case 2, if mod of b is greater or equals to mod a, then mod of a plus b is less or equals to mod a plus mod b less than 2 into mod b. So, mod of a plus b whole to the power p is strictly less than 2 to the power p mod of b to the power p. Hence, mod of a plus b whole to the power p is less or equals to 2 to the power p 
into mod of a to the power p plus mod of b to the power p. Thus, in either case, mod of a plus b whole to the power p is less or equals to 2 to the power p into mod of a to the power p plus mod of b to the power p. Now, we get a theorem if x t belongs to capital L p 0 1 and y t belongs to capital L p 0 1, where 0 is less or equals to t less or equals to 1, then x t plus y t belongs to L p 0 1 comma p get out equals to 1. Proof we have modulus of x t plus y t whole to the power p is less or equals to 2 to the power p, modulus of x t whole to the power p plus modulus of y t whole to the power p. So, integration 0 to 1 modulus of x t plus y t whole to the power p d t is less or equals to 2 to the power p integration 0 to 1 mod of x t whole to the power p d t plus 0 to 1 modulus of y t whole to the power p d t. Since x t and y t both belongs to capital L p 0 1, the two integrals on the right hand side exist and so integration 0 to 1 modulus of x t plus y t whole to the power p d t exist which implies that x t plus y t belongs to L p 0 1. Similarly, we can show that x t minus y t belongs to L p 0 1. We get another theorem if x is equal to sequence j i i belongs to a small L p and y belongs to sequence eta i belongs to L p where p is get or equals to 1 then x plus y is equal to sequence j i i plus eta i belongs to L p. The proof is that we have for each i modulus of j i i plus eta i to the power p is less or equal to 2 to the power p into modulus of j i i to the power p plus modulus of eta i to the power p and hence sigma i equal to 1 to infinity mod of j i i plus eta i to the power p is less or equals to 2 to the power p into sigma i equal to infinity mod of j i i to the power p plus sigma i equal to 1 to infinity mod of eta i to the power p. Since x comma y belongs to small l p sigma i equal to 1 to infinity mod of j i i to the power p is strictly less than plus infinity and sigma i equal to infinity mod of eta i to the power p less than plus infinity. And so, sigma i equal to 1 to infinity modulus of j i i plus eta i to the power p less than infinity which implies that x plus y belongs to small l p. Similarly, it can be shown that x minus y belongs to small l p. The theorem if a is greater or equals to 0, b is greater or equals to 0 and p greater than 1, then a into b is less or equals to a to the power p by p plus b to the power q by q where 1 by p plus 1 by q is equal to 1. The proof we first prove the following inequality c to the power 1 by p into d to the power 1 by q is less or equals to c by p plus d by q where c is greater or equals to 0 and d is greater or equals to 0. The inequality 2 is clear if c equal to 0 or d equal to 0. So, we let c greater than 0 and d greater than 0. Proof if 0 is less or equals to m is less or equals to 1, the function f x is equal to m into x minus 1 minus x to the power m minus 1 is non decreasing for x greater or equals to 1, and hence f x is greater or equals to f 1. Consequently, x to the power m minus 1 is less or equals to m into x minus 1 for x greater or equals to 1. If c is less or equals to d, then 3 is obtained from 4 by putting x is equal to d by c and m is equal to 1 by q. If c is greater than d, then 3 is obtained from 4 on putting x is equal to c by t and m is equal to 1 by p. In equation number 2, take c to the power 1 by p is equal to a and d to the power 1 by q is equal to b and we get a into b is less or equals to a to the power p by p plus b to the power q by q, which is the equation number 2. The theorem is very important theorem and is named as Holder's inequality for sums. If x is equal to sequence j i i belongs to L p and y is equal to eta i belongs to L q where 1 by p plus 1 by q is equal to 1 as p is greater than 1, then sigma equal to 1 to infinity mod j i i eta i is less or equals to sigma equal to 1 to infinity mod of j i i to the power p whole to the power 1 by p into sigma equal to 1 to infinity mod of eta i to the power q whole to the power 1 by q. Proof take a is equal to mod of xi i divided by sigma equal to 1 to infinity mod of xi i to the power p whole to the power 1 by p and b is equal to mod of eta i divided by sigma equal to 1 to infinity mod of eta i to the power q whole to the power 1 by q. 
then by 2 we get mod of xi i into mod of eta i divided by sigma i equal to 1 to infinity mod of xi i to the power p whole to the power 1 by p into sigma i equal to 1 to infinity mod of eta i to the power q whole to the power 1 by q is less or equals to mod of xi i to the power p divided by p into sigma i equal to 1 to infinity mod of xi i to the power p plus mod of eta i to the power q divided by q into sigma i equal to 1 to infinity mod of eta i to the power q. So, sigma i equal to infinity mod of xi i into mod of eta i divided by sigma i equal to 1 to infinity mod of xi i to the power p whole to the power 1 by p into sigma i equal to 1 to infinity mod of eta i to the power q whole to the power 1 by q is less or equals to 1 by p plus 1 by q is equal to 1 by assumption and hence sigma i equal to 1 to infinity mod of xi i eta i less or equals to sigma i equal to 1 to infinity mod of xi i to the power p whole to the power 1 by p into sigma i equal to 1 to infinity mod of eta i to the power q whole to the power 1 by q and hence the inequality phi follows. Now, the theorem is known as the holder inequality for integrals. If x t belongs to capital L p 0 1 and y t belongs to L q 0 1 where 1 by p plus 1 by q equal to 1 and p greater than 1 then integration 0 to 1 mod of x t into y t d t is less or equals to integration 0 to 1 mod of x t whole to the power p d t whole to the power 1 by p into 0 to 1 integration mod of y t whole to the power q d t whole to the power 1 by q equation number 6. The proof is like this put a is equal to mod of x t divided by integration 0 to 1 mod of x t whole to the power p d t whole to the power 1 by p and b equal to mod of y t divided by integration 0 to 1 mod of y t whole to the power q d t whole to the power 1 by q. In equation number 2 we get mod of x t into mod of y t whole divided by integration 0 to 1 mod of x t whole to the power p d t whole to the power 1 by p into we get modulus of x t into mod of y t whole divided by integration 0 to 1 mod x t whole to the power p d t whole to the power 1 by p into integration 0 to 1 mod of y t whole to the power q d t whole to the power 1 by q is less or equals to modulus of x t whole to the power p divided by p into integration 0 to 1 mod x t whole to the power p d t whole to the power 1 by p plus mod of y t whole to the power q divided by q into integration 0 to 1 mod of y t whole to the power q d t whole to the power 1 by q. The proof the right hand side of the above inequality involves integral functions and show the left hand side is also integrable. So, we get integration 0 to 1 mod x t into mod of y t d t divided by integration 0 to 1 mod x t whole to the power p d t whole to the power 1 by p into integration 0 to 1 mod y t whole to the power q d t whole to the power 1 by q is less or equals to 1 by p plus 1 by q is equal to 1 and hence integration 0 to 1 mod x t into y t d t is less or equals to integration 0 to 1 mod x t whole to the power p d t whole to the power 1 by p into integration 0 to 1 mod of y t whole to the power q d t whole to the power 1 by q and consequently 6 follows. Theorem Minkowski inequality for sums if x is equal to sequence xi i belongs to L p and y equal to sequence eta i belongs to L p where p is greater or equals to 1 then sigma i equal to 1 to infinity mod of xi i plus eta i whole to the power p whole to the power 1 by p is less or equals to sigma i equal to 1 to infinity mod of xi i to the power p whole to the power 1 by p plus sigma i equal to 1 to infinity mod of eta i to the power p whole to the power 1 by p. This equation is named as 7. The proof is like this if z is equal to sequence xi i belongs to L p then z dash is equal to 
sequence beta i whole to the power p minus 1 belongs to L q, where 1 by p plus 1 by q is equal to 1, because mod beta i whole to the power p minus 1 whole to the power 1 by q is equal to mod of beta i whole to the power p minus 1 into q is equal to mod beta i whole to the power p minus 1 into p divided by p minus 1 that is equal to mod of beta i whole to the power p. And the convergence of the series i equal to 1 to infinity mod of beta i to the power p implies that of sigma i equal to 1 to infinity mod of beta i whole to the power p minus 1 whole to the power q. Now, sigma i equal to 1 to infinity mod of xi i plus eta i whole to the power p is equal to sigma i equal to 1 to infinity mod xi i plus eta i whole to the power p minus 1 into mod xi i plus eta i, which is less or equals to sigma i equal to 1 to infinity mod of xi i plus eta i whole to the power p minus 1 into mod of xi i plus sigma i equal to 1 to infinity mod of xi i plus eta i whole to the power p minus 1 into mod of eta i. This follows due to mod of xi i plus eta i whole to the power p minus 1. This sequence belongs to L q and mod of xi i belongs to L p and mod of eta i belongs to L p. The proof is given below. Now, by applying the equation number 6 to each of the expressions on the right, we get sigma i equal to 1 to infinity mod of xi i plus eta i whole to the power p is less or equals to sigma i equal to 1 to infinity mod of xi i plus eta i whole to the power p minus 1 into q whole to the power 1 by q into sigma i equal to 1 to infinity mod of xi i to the power p whole to the power 1 by p plus sigma i equal to 1 to infinity mod of eta i to the power p whole to the power 1 by p. This is equal to sigma i equal to 1 to infinity mod of xi i plus eta i whole to the power p whole to the power 1 by q into within the third bracket sigma i equal to 1 to infinity mod of xi i to the power p whole to the power 1 by p plus sigma i equal to 1 to infinity mod of eta i whole to the power p whole to the power 1 by p. The proof is given below dividing both sides by sigma i equal to 1 to infinity mod of xi i plus eta i whole to the power p whole to the power 1 by q and noting the fact 1 by p plus 1 by q is equal to 1, we get sigma i equal to 1 to infinity mod of xi i plus eta i whole to the power p whole to the power 1 by p is less or equals to sigma i equal to 1 to infinity mod of xi i to the power p whole to the power 1 by p plus sigma i equal to 1 to infinity mod of eta i to the power p whole to the power 1 by p. And therefore, the inequality 7 follows. Now, there is another important inequality known as Minkowski inequality for integrals. If function x t and y t belongs to capital L p 0 1, where p greater than 1, then integration 0 to 1 mod of x t plus y t whole to the power p d t is less or equals to integration 0 to 1 mod x t whole to the power p d t 
whole to the power 1 by p plus integration 0 to 1 mod of y t whole to the power p d t whole to the power 1 by p. This inequalities number is 8. The proof is given below. If z t belongs to capital L p 0 1, then modulus of z t to the power p minus 1 belongs to capital L q 0 1, where 1 by p plus 1 by q is equal to 1. Because of the fact mod z t to the power p minus 1 whole to the power q is equal to mod of z t whole to the power p minus 1 into p divided by p minus 1 is equal to mod of z t whole to the power p. And since z t belongs to capital L p 0 1, it follows that modulus of z t to the power p minus 1 whole to the power q is integrable. That is mod of z t whole to the power p minus 1 belongs to capital L q 0 1. The proof integration 0 to 1 mod of x t plus y t whole to the power p d t is equal to 0 to 1 mod of x t plus y t whole to the power p minus 1 into mod of x t plus y t d t is less or equals to integration 0 to 1 mod of x t plus y t whole to the power p minus 1 into mod x t d t plus integration 0 to 1 mod x t plus y t whole to the power p minus 1 into mod y t d t. Now, by the above fact and by above theorem, modulus of x t plus y t whole to the power p minus 1 belongs to L q 0 1. Also, we have x t comma y t belongs to capital L p 0 1. The proof is like this by applying holder inequality that appears in 6 for integrals to each of the integrals on the right side. We get integration 0 to 1 mod x t plus y t whole to the power p d t is less or equals to integration 0 to 1 mod x t plus y t whole to the power p minus 1 into q d t whole to the power 1 by q into integration 0 to 1 mod x t whole to the power p d t whole to the power 1 by p plus integration 0 to 1 mod x t y t whole to the power p minus 1 into q d t whole to the power 1 by q into integration 0 to 1 mod y t whole to the power p d t whole to the power 1 by p which is equal to integration 0 to 1 mod x t plus y t whole to the power p d t whole to the power 1 by q into within the third bracket integration 0 to 1 mod x t whole to the power p d t whole to the power 1 by p plus integration 0 to 1 mod y t whole to the power p d t whole to the power 1 by p. The bracket closed. Dividing both sides by integration 0 to 1 mod x t plus y t whole to the power p d t to the power 1 by q and by using 1 by p plus 1 by q is equal to 1, we get integration 0 to 1 mod x t plus y t whole to the power p d t whole to the power 1 by p is less or equals to integration 0 to 1 mod x t whole to the power p d t whole to the power 1 by p plus integration 0 to 1 mod of y t whole to the power p d t whole to the power 1 by p. Just now, we have finished with an important inequality namely Minkowski inequality for integrals. Now, 
we can set another type of integral and it can be left for an exercise to the readers. If 0 less than p less than 1 and q be such that 1 by p plus 1 by q is equal to 1 and if f belongs to capital L p a b and g belongs to capital L q a b, then integration a to b mod f g d t is greater or equals to integration 0 to 1 mod of f t whole to the power p d t whole to the power 1 by p into mod of g t whole to the power q d t whole to the power 1 by q. So, the module 1 is finished with fundamental inequalities which are very essential in function analysis and that will be helpful and will be applied for another chapters that will be discussed later on. With these ideas as discussed in module 1 of this chapter 1, we now close module 1 of this chapter 1.